Hello, I'm Ben Patterson. I'm from Shoreland's Wildlife Gardens, and we started our white stork project back in 2013. Um, the white stork was a species that was found throughout the UK um, in the Middle Ages. It was a species that would have flown up from Europe. Uh, squadrons of birds in formation would have come across from, probably from France. Here at Shorelands, we had storks originally that came from the Cotswold Wildlife Park in Oxford, and they were birds that were bred in captivity. Um, we'd been part of a breeding program that had sent storks to Europe, and we decided that we wanted to perhaps shorten the gap. Rather than take birds to France or the Netherlands, perhaps we could release them here. We decided that we would do a trial. So we would go to Poland, and we went to Poland because the Polish have a rehabilitation centre, similar to like our RSPCA centres, where all animals are sent to a central hub, and the veterinarian team would look after those animals and ideally put them back in the wild. The diet of these birds is quite important. Um, obviously the centre in Poland fed them their diet. Here in the UK we feed them very much a meat or a pelleted diet. But we're conscious that these birds are wild birds. They will have been eating uh, prey, insects, you know, mice, uh, frogs, rats, moles. Equally, some of them will have been eating carrion. So here we get fresh uh, meat from the butchers every day. We get the bone, we get the skin and we get the, the fat. And we put this out with the stalks as part of their diet. So we put this food out here, amongst it there's some seed as well, and our other birds, our exotic birds that live in this field with them, the white nape cranes and the grey crown cranes, will pick the seed out of this food and it will draw the stalks over. And by having these tame birds amongst them, it means that these, these previously wild rehabilitated birds um, will be nice and steady and calm, and therefore if we need to do any veterinary work with them later on, they'll be quite amenable to what we need to do to them. This is one of the birds we imported in 2014 uh, that came from the rehabilitation centre in, in Warsaw in Poland. Um, a previously wild bird that's collided with a power line um, and has extensive damage to its wing. This is not a, a tame bird, it's obviously a wild bird. Um, it would have been migrating um, when it hit the power line and therefore it's not like a captive bird here, it's quite, it can be quite aggressive. So I'm be careful how I hold, as I hold it. You can see that the body condition isn't, isn't really wonderful. Um, it's gone through a lot in its life already um, and uh, the wing if you look at this wing on this side here the bone is clearly showing and there's it, quite a lot of damage and the, the Polish vets have worked extensively on this bird to get it into the condition it is today this bird is never going to leave this site. It can't fly. It's, it's missing parts of its wing. However, it does have a Polish ring. Um, so we can always identify this bird. It's got, it's got its own record card, and it says Warsaw Zoo on it. Um, and it says all our, all our Polish birds are fitted with metal rings. Birds that we think that will be able to leave this site have got a green Darvik ring, a Polish green Darvik ring. But all have got metal rings, and all are microchipped as well. So we know exactly which birds came from this site. This is one of our stork nests. Um, again, because our adult birds can't fly, they have to nest on the ground. Now normally, a stork would nest on top of a tree, top of a farm building, top of a house, church, but again, they can't. So what they do here, this is a natural mound, and the birds can walk up, walk behind the mound, and come up, and this is the highest point in our property. And therefore, they produce this nest, and they add to this nest every day throughout the breeding season. It's about six foot across, four foot deep in places, and they say add to it again from the spring. The adult birds will start using this for roosting, from mid-February and they'll start lining it then and then we might have eggs in March or April depending on the year and the chicks can leave this nest um, and they'll be flying fitted with rings and they could leave. Um, previously we've sent chicks to the Netherlands part of a program there and we've sent chicks to France um, but this year again we'll hope to keep these chicks in the UK. Last year we had three chicks and the difficult thing about these storks that have come from Poland is that, again, they, they have had a lot of trauma. They've had major injuries, and they don't settle very well. Some of these birds will never settle. Um, but anyway, they're starting. We now have two pairs of our original group that are starting to nest, and hopefully perhaps six, eight, ten chicks next year.
the original birds you brought in in 2014, um, many of these birds had injuries that prevented them from flying, but some of those birds recovered. Um, this wasn't our intention. The original birds were supposed to be here with decoys um, and as, as a trial. But of that original batch, four birds um, recovered sufficiently to leave this site. Um, one of those birds was blind in one eye, so she was recaptured. Um, um, one of those birds regularly, routinely comes back and forth, and we had a decision whether we caught that bird and brought it back into captivity, or we left it. It's a wild European bird that's recovered. Should we catch it and bring it back into captivity? And we decided not to. Um, and another bird, the last bird, sadly didn't make it. Um, and it's sad when a bird dies, but equally, the amount of trauma those birds went through, um, um, you do expect some losses occasionally, and one bird didn't make it, and, and here he is. He was Z3572. You know, he got into trouble, was sent down to the centre at, at, at Warsaw, um, and eventually came to us. But sadly, you know, his, his injuries and his long term health issues meant that he died a few weeks ago. In the distance behind me, we have a, one of our white storks that's left the site. Um, the bird's fitted with metal rings and a Darvik ring. Um, we, we, can, we can identify who the birds are, um, and we want them to start foraging. Out here in this field, they're looking for insects. They might get the odd mouse, but predominantly it's, it's, it's worms they're feeding on. And they're just molting at the moment. Um, the wild ones, because they're captive, uh, molt in a different way to wild ones, where wild ones would start to be moving down through Europe now heading down to southern Europe and perhaps across to Africa. Um, well, these ones here are now in their molt, but they're starting to move. One of our birds today is across in Oxford and another one is across in Gloucestershire. We want them to start moving, we want them to start getting migration patterns. And equally, our captive birds here that can't fly, we want wild birds to join them using our birds as decoys. So hopefully wild birds naturally moving through Europe might stop to feed here with our birds at Shorelands and set up a, a, you know, a wild colony or a stopover point. So the, this bird behind me in the field is great. So we want to see more birds in the fields of the Waveney Valley, feeding on insects, the occasional mole and the occasional mouse, and doing what they used to do hundreds of years ago. At the wildlife gardens here at Shorelands, we have lots of captive animals. Some are old, some are injured, some are kept as part of breeding programs. And obviously, we have the Polish storks out in the meadow. Um, obviously, there's birds nested behind the pond and uh, nested on the ground. Now, unlike a normal stork that would nest on a, on a building or a tree and have no real predators, on the ground they do have predators. And one of our baby storks was actually nibbled by a hedgehog. When the stork was very small, it was a, it, a very small chick just left the egg. It was it was tiny, and the hedgehog just nibbled its foot because it was like a, a, a worm. I suppose. So one of the chicks had to have some antibiotics, it had to have a bit of care and attention, which has made it tamer than the other chicks, and normally can be found walking around the gardens. It goes through the flower beds, flies around, sits on the roofs. And what's interesting about it is when it leaves this site, it goes off foraging in local fields, um, it's not tame. And we've had uh, a local policeman report it and walked out into a field to try and catch it, and actually he found that uh, it wasn't tame at all, and when he got close to it, it flew away. So if you meet it here or in our car park, it's quite steady, it will, you can go up to it, but if it flies off into local fields to feed, it's not tame at all. And normally, most days, you'll find it walking around the paths or roosting on the roofs. But it's a good ambassador for the species. So that's where we're from here at Shorelands. Our aim is to put those birds back initially into these three pens down the river valley. It, hopefully, they'll start breeding. Birds may join them and that would be wonderful. We want to see them back in this valley with oak trees in the background that have been here hundreds of years and it could have been that hundreds of years ago that same oak wood had wild white storks nesting in it. The rest of the environment has changed. We've brought storks back to a part of England where they formerly lived. Yeah, they were an important part of our heritage, white storks, so we're pleased to be doing our bit to bring them back.